Welcome to Microsoft OneNote for Nonprofits and Libraries. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, and I'm glad to be your host for today's event. Our expert for today is Ian Nicutel. He's a Program Manager on the OneNote team at Microsoft where he's working daily to enable more people to achieve more through the wonders of digital note-taking. Previously, Ian was the founder of The Wire, the world's first online publication about the Nintendo Wii. And he was the host of their podcast producing over 170 episodes and attracting an active audience of 18,000 monthly listeners for many years. So we're glad to have him joining us. And he presents on events like this regularly. So we're really glad to have him. For those of you who were at NTC last year, the Nonprofit Technology Network Conference, uh, he was there and presented about OneNote as well. So we're glad to have him on as an expert. You'll also see on the back end assisting with chat, my colleague Ali Bezdikian and Rosette Nguyen, who will be there to help answer questions and provide any expertise or share out any experiences that you share with us that we think the whole audience might benefit from hearing about. So watch for them in the back end and know that we are seeing all of your messages come in. Even if you can't see what others are chatting, we're seeing it and we will be sharing back out any useful resources. TechSoup's team is located in our San Francisco headquarters office. So feel free to join in the chat and let us know where you're coming in from today. We're glad to have you all joining us. And I believe Ian is in the Redmond, Washington area. We've got folks joining from LA, Delaware, Germany, Grand Forks, Canada, Colorado, Maine, Rhode Island, California, Mexico. We're glad to have all of you on. Right now we have around 350 joining and I'm sure that number will continue to climb. While you're chatting in, I'll do a quick introduction of our agenda. We'll be talking briefly about TechSoup for those of you who are not already familiar with our work. We'll have a couple of live poll questions for you, our audience, to let us know what your experience is already with OneNote. So we can try and tailor a little bit of our focus of today's webinar around your greatest needs. Ian will then talk a little bit about OneNote's vision and progress, where it's been going and talk about some of the EDU options for those of you who are working in uh, staff shared notebook and classroom environments. Talk about some of the API and apps that sync up with OneNote. And then we'll get to that live demo where you can see it in real time and you can share um, with your friends and colleagues anything that you think would be useful for your teams to try out in your organizations. I'll talk at the end just for a couple of minutes about how to get OneNote through TechSoup if you don't already have it and the different ways you can access it as a tool. We'll have time for Q&A at the end. So TechSoup Global is a global network of partner NGOs providing technology to over a half million organizations in 120 countries around the world. You can learn about our work in our 2014 Year in Review. We know these links in the slides are not clickable right now, but they are when you get the slide deck. So just keep an eye on those links and refer to the slide deck when you want to see them later on or to the follow-up email. Any place there's a dot on this map, there's a TechSoup presence, and it's rapidly expanding. So if there's a green dot, there's a NetSquared local group where you can meet up in person with real live technologists each month. And we are serving, like I said, more than 615,000 NGOs around the world, delivering technology products and grants to nearly the tune of $5 billion. So I'm proud to have been a TechSoup user and beneficiary at three small nonprofits before I became a TechSoup staff person. You can learn more about our programs at TechSoup.org. Now on to the topic of the day. Who is already using OneNote in our audience? Go ahead and let us know how frequently you are using it, or maybe you've never used it or never heard of it even, and you just came because you were curious. Let us know because this will help us inform a bit about our focus for today's webinar. If the great majority of you on the line are totally new to OneNote, then we may spend a little bit more time orienting you to the product, to what this app can do. If most of you have a lot of experience with it, then we would shift our focus a little bit. So let us know where you're at, and I'll leave just a few seconds for everybody to chime in. I've got a lot of people chiming in in the, in the chat that they've never used it, they're new to it, maybe they've used it in the past, used it in a previous job, periodically at home but not for work so far. Those are great uh, pieces of input to share. I'm going to go ahead and close this in 3, 2, 1. And let's see, it looks like 56% and actually we'll just round up to 60% have either never used it or never even heard of it. So we have a lot of folks that are brand new to it, more than uh, almost two-thirds of our audience pretty brand new to it. 
uh, and some folks who use it only when somebody else shares it. So that's something that frequently happens. Somebody else in your organization or on your team uses it, and maybe they share a link to it, but you've not actually set up and created your own uh, shared notebooks or, or pages in OneNote. One other quick question again that will help inform how we bring this webinar topic to you. How are you most interested in using OneNote? And if there's something not on this list, go ahead and chat in what way you're interested in using it, or maybe you are currently using it that's not listed here. And again, these are just some of the options that we've listed out. You can select any that apply to you. So I say most interested, but we do want to know what uh, – maybe you're interested in all of the above, but I didn't provide that as an option. So maybe you're most interested in using it for note-taking or collaborating with your coworkers. Maybe you're looking for a way to research and gather collections by pinning things from around the web uh, so that you can collect resources together for your board meeting or your annual fundraising gala. Maybe you're looking to use it for your own personal note-taking, or you'd like to use it for brainstorming or mind mapping, different strategies and plans, or list making. Uh, lots of people are commenting in the chat. Uh, share with outside the organization with volunteers, note-taking and collaboration, scanning and documents. So this is great. We're getting a lot of people uh, adding other ways that they use it. Somebody comments their finance uses it to share documents and batches project management in a shared environment, monthly reports, lists. So lots of great ways that you guys are mentioning in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and show the results so we can move forward and have Ian introduce us to OneNote and talk a bit about the vision and where it's going, and then spend some time showing us what it looks like in real time. So it looks like the majority of folks are interested in collaboration with coworkers, note-taking for meetings, and brainstorming or mind mapping. So, I'm going to go ahead and move us forward to having Ian come on the line. Thanks so much for joining us today, Ian. We're really glad to have you with us. And take it away. Show us what OneNote is all about. Tell us the story of OneNote. And most importantly, we'd love to see it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, welcome everybody. I appreciate the time today. It's great to be here. Um, OneNote is really an amazing application. Uh, I've been working on it for a few years now. And I must say, out of all the Office apps, you probably know of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but you might not really know much about OneNote. Um, we like to say it actually has the highest satisfaction rates out of all the Office apps, but the least awareness. So I'm here today to help you learn a little bit about what it's about. Sounds like from the initial poll that a big majority of you have never used it. Um, so I'll definitely walk you through how it's set up, how to think about the actual product and how it's working. Uh, and then we'll show it off and show a lot of interesting things that you can do with it. Um, and I've tried to create some scenarios specifically for uh, folks in a nonprofit uh, workspace. Um, so to continue on, just a brief overview. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our vision at OneNote, uh, where we see the product and where it's going, um, a, a quick year in review. Uh, for example, we've done a lot of work in the past year. We've really um, increased the amount of people working on OneNote. Uh, we've elevated up the um, importance of the product within Microsoft with our new CEO. Uh, and so there's just been a ton, a ton of progress. Um, but a lot of people don't know the product is actually about 10 years old. Uh, I'll talk briefly about some of the stuff we've been doing in education and how that might relate in the future to, to your world. Um, and then the most recent work we've done to make OneNote a service, um, which actually impacts a lot of the end features that you will use day to day. Uh, and then I'll jump into the product and, and demo some things. So for OneNote, the real vision is it just helps you stay in control of, of data. There's just way too much data out there today. Everybody kind of deals with this in different ways. Um, and so we make it really easy in OneNote to capture anything, to enrich and organize that information once you've captured it, and then help you recall it. Because we believe that information isn't very valuable unless you can pull it up, you can mess around with it, you can organize it in the way you need to, like data is only as useful as it is that you can get at it. And so there's kind of a little graphic there that helps you understand kind of the process that we think OneNote can help you do around recalling and organizing and capturing and enriching. So like I said, in the past year we've done a ton of stuff. Um, this is just a kind of smorgasbord of all the features that we've released in the different timelines. Uh, so you can see we've done a lot of things. And one of the things you might be noticing if you look at this slide is, you see the words iPad, and you see the word Android, and 
Windows and um, iOS and all these different platforms. And one of the huge things, and I'll mention it on the next slide as well, is OneNote is on every single platform. There is not a platform that you cannot get OneNote for today. Um, about a year and a half ago now, we released on the Mac platform for your Mac uh, PCs. And that was kind of the last frontier that we weren't on. And we are there and we're in there in full force. Uh, we've been featured by Apple and we have uh, really high ratings in the App Store and people are loving the product. Um, so that's a really, really core message I, I hope everybody takes home today is they understand that OneNote is anywhere you need it to be, uh, including the web. We have a great web app uh, that can get you there too. Uh, and that's the reason we do that is we understand that note taking breaks down very quickly if you can't take a note anywhere at any time. Um, so if we only made a Windows app, that wouldn't really be that helpful for you. And so a lot of people don't know is OneNote actually led the way for Microsoft in being cross-platform. So you may have seen in the news or heard from friends lately that Microsoft seems to be making lots of apps for iOS and Android and Apple and Google. What's this about? Well, OneNote has been doing this for years uh, because we understood the importance of being everywhere that our users may be. Um, and so I just wanted to stress that up front. So again, uh, as I just mentioned, we're free on every platform uh, across all devices, uh, and you can get that at OneNote.com. Um, so I know uh, Becky will talk a bit at the end about different ways you can get it through um, subscription services and Office 365. But if you just want to go right now, download an app for your phone or for your uh, PC, you can do that and just start playing and messing around with it. It's absolutely free. Uh, there's literally just a download button on OneNote.com. It will get you to the right download for your device, uh, and it's, it's completely free. So you may have heard about Windows 10. Uh, the big day was yesterday for Microsoft. We released it to the world. Uh, and OneNote works really great with Windows 10, and we've done some interesting special things. So I wanted to throw this in just to give you all a heads up. Um, it really is kind of our, like we like to say, our hero experience, our showcase experience. Um, so it's going to be pre-installed on the Start menu uh, and the Action Center of Windows 10. So if you get a new PC or you upgrade, it will be there. Um, and you don't need to even unlock your device. So if you're on a tablet, for example, um, we did this last year on the Surface, uh, you can actually just click your pen uh, and it will actually unlock the device for you above the lock screen so that you can just take a note with one note. Um, so if you're out and about, let's say you're a mobile worker, or you're in the field, or you're doing something, you're out you know, at a partner or doing a meeting, you can just click the pen without even typing in your password or unlocking the rest of the device, take a quick note, hit a button, boom, it saved it off to OneNote. You didn't even have to unlock your device. So it's in and out super quick. And then the other big piece for Windows 10 is we, you may have heard we have a new browser. So uh, we made Microsoft Edge, which is a replacement for Internet Explorer. And built into this browser by default, which comes on every single machine with Windows 10, there is a way to actually take notes on the top of a web page and send those to OneNote. Um, so we call that annotating the web or, or writing on the web. Um, so that's built in and that's really interesting. Uh, I specifically helped work a little bit on that feature in the early days. Uh, so feel free to give it a try if you have Windows 10 or if you have uh, downloaded it or tried it out. Uh, and give us feedback because it's, it's, it's early days. You know, it's the first version of the browser and the first version of this. But it's a thing that we see as the future of the web, making it more accessible to children, uh, to education scenarios, to anyone really that just wants to be able to, to, to write on a page. So OneNote at work. It's a lot more than just taking a quick note. Um, and so this is, for the, I think, a really key slide for all of you who are unfamiliar to the product. Um, the way to think about OneNote is it's a digital metaphor for a physical notebook. Um, and once I jump into the app in a few minutes, you're going to see how that actually looks and feels, which is a big part of it. But that's what that purple square there is talking about. It's a familiar notebook structure, and we really tried to make a metaphor around a real notebook that makes it easy for a person just jumping into the app to grok and understand. Um, and then that piece earlier that I talked about around capturing content is what that gray uh, square to the right is talking about. We want to make it easy for you to create and add content from anywhere. And I'm going to show you some examples where we have a web clipper, for example, that can take content from the web and get it really quickly and easily into OneNote. Another major thing that I like to tell people is, of course, there's many of you out there that say, I, I use pen and paper still. There's a certain experience to that that we even understand is hard to replicate. But there's certain things that pen and paper just simply cannot do. And one of those is in that red square, and that's finding it. 
So you'll never be able to actually do an in-depth search on your physical notebook, right? That's one powerful thing that OneNote can offer you. It has a fantastic full text index search, which means you can literally type any word that's on any page in your notebook into our search box, and it's going to find it and jump you right to that page if you click on it. And then we also have tagging built in, which also uh, elevates the ability to find information a step further. And lastly, sharing and collaboration. So a lot of you said in the beginning of the webinar that you were interested in that. And that's a major component and another reason that uh, digital note taking is much more powerful in some ways than physical note taking. You can't physically share your notebook with a thousand people unless you go maybe photocopy it and mail it out. Uh, but you can in OneNote with just a couple clicks. And that's extremely powerful, not just for disseminating information, but if you want to collaborate and be more innovative in today's world, that's a major part of how we work. Uh, and OneNote makes that extremely easy. So obviously OneNote is plugged into Office 365, our suite or service of Office apps. And it definitely works better when you have that. Um, I think you know, I'll, I'll skim over this, but it gives you some abilities to do things like share documents with a team easier or have co-authoring. Um, and it, it, I would say it really integrates well with the rest of the Office suite. And that's one of the things that Microsoft, I, I think personally, does really well is we try to leverage the fact that you know, my, my friends in Excel are right down the hallway from me. So I can go work on a feature with them as a product person and uh, hopefully make all of our users' lives even easier and better. Um, and so that's just uh, one thing to think about there. So briefly I wanted to mention OneNote in Education. So this is uh, talking about our class notebook creator. And I want to just explain a bit why this is so powerful. Uh, and then and it will apply hopefully to you all um, that have a team of folks in the future. So the impetus for this was we at OneNote realized that we want to grow in digital note taking with as many people as possible. Um, and education is a very critical component to that. Uh, obviously um, we all have you know, either friends or children of our own and education is so critical. But for OneNote, the thing that we made was a class notebook creator. We have a common problem with OneNote, and many of you may have used OneNote once and opened it up. And you'll notice uh, many of the other Office apps have templates. OneNote does not, and you launch it and you get a big white page. And you might be sitting there saying, how do I actually get started? So we created this class notebook creator, and it's really a framework for how to use OneNote um, that lets a teacher, with a couple clicks of a wizard, create a notebook. And we actually suggest different sections and structures for the notebook like, oh, maybe you should create a homework section and a handout section and an information section. And then it shares it out with her and, or, uh, the teacher's entire classroom. Um, so all the students suddenly get an email that says, your teacher just created this notebook. Here's where all your homework is going to be. You might want to use it. Uh, so it's a great way for people to get using OneNote in a, in a structured way in a very easy way. And it creates a couple different areas. There's a collaboration space, a content library, and student notebooks. And so then we kind of extrapolated that out to this next piece here, which is a staff notebook. And so at first we're targeting this towards um, staffs at schools. So think administrations, uh, you know, the principal and the, and the district admins and things like that, the school board, PTAs. Um, but you could very easily imagine a future in which we extrapolate this out to any staff at any business, including nonprofits and libraries, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is going to give you the power to literally in two minutes or less uh, create a OneNote notebook, share it with your entire team, uh, and have it all set up ready to go. So it actually has sections in there for your team that make sense and help you move things forward and get things done. So this is all kind of new stuff that's on the way from us, and I just wanted to give it a quick mention here. And I, I guess I would say if you have children of your own or if you're, if you're involved in education at all, you know, mention it. See if teachers could use it. It's a very powerful tool. So our API. API, if you're not familiar, is kind of a tech term. It stands for uh, Application Protocol Interface. Um, it basically means that it is a way to allow our application, OneNote, to be used by other developers in the, in the world and build on top of it, make it better, make it more interesting. Um, and so previous to about a year and a half ago, two years, OneNote didn't have this ability. So the only features OneNote had were the ones we at Microsoft built. Now that we have an API, anyone out there, whether it's a kid in college who has some free time or a professional development team at, a, at major corporations, they can build on top of OneNote and make interesting integrations. Um, it's very similar to how Apple or Android or Microsoft creates um, you know, phone applications 
uh, or APIs I should say, that allow anyone to make an app for your phone. So now anyone can make an app on top of OneNote. And so why this is important is it allows end users like you all listening to have a ton more capabilities because simply you know, we're only uh, a certain amount of people here on, one, on the OneNote team. We can only do so much. Um, and now we just have so many more people building interesting things on top of us. And so uh, right now we launched it originally with personal data. Um, so that's if you're using OneDrive for example, your personal OneDrive account. All that work, the API worked on top of that. But we're excited to announce that we have an Office 365 version of our API in preview. Um, and then you can do interesting things like that last bullet point talks about, like extracting recipes and business cards and products and articles automatically. And when I jump over to the demo in a minute or two, I'm going to show you a page that we have um, which uh, actually shows a ton of our partners and integrations. So I'm not going to spend time going through all of them here, but you can check out the site yourself and you can do things like you know, all of a sudden you'll start seeing a OneNote logo on your scanner, for example, because we um, did a bunch of integrations with people like Brother and Epson, um, and a whole bunch of interesting things like that. So this is what I just mentioned. If you want to go to OneNote.com slash apps, uh, you'll see a whole smorgasbord of all our partners there, everyone from Doxy and Chegg and Neat and Brother and Epson and Feedly. Uh, there's just a whole host of them. And there's a couple that we've even uh, done internally on the OneNote team using our own API, and I'm going to show a couple of those um, as kind of showcase scenarios. So with all that said, uh, this is the portion of the show where I'm going to jump into the demo uh, and show you the product and, and some of the, the scenarios and things you can do with it. So let me just share my uh, computer here. And hopefully everybody can uh, see things. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show off was our uh, OneNote.com uh, slash apps page. So this is that site that I just showed. You can go here and it lists, gives you a list of all the things you could possibly do. Um, and there's just a ton of stuff. Um, one of the ones I wanted to show, you'll see here, is called a OneNote Clipper. This is something that uh, I personally worked on, so it's near and dear to my heart. But it also is a first party experience that we built using our API. And if you just go to OneNote.com slash Clipper, the address is right up here. It will send you to this web page, and this page is basically the place you can install the Clipper. And the OneNote Clipper is just a little tool for your browser, uh, and it works in any browser. So Chrome, uh, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, anything you're using. Um, and what it does is in Chrome, for example, it's an extension. So it adds a little button up here. You'll see the OneNote logo. And what I can do, for example, is take content from a web site and get it into OneNote super fast and easy. Um, so an example for this, I was doing some, uh, I was trying to put my, my fundraising or my nonprofit hat on uh, to do some scenarios that might resonate with you all. And here you'll see that I have uh, top fundraising ideas for a gala event. And you'll see this, like many web pages today, there's a lot of content on here. This is all great stuff that I want. But there's a lot of kind of, quite frankly, junk on the page too that I don't really need in my OneNote. Now I could copy and paste it, but sometimes that's a little clunky. Um, so what I can do is just click the OneNote Clipper, and what you'll see it does is it loads a preview, and it gives you it pops up right here, the purple piece, and it gives a preview of a bunch of stuff. Um, so you'll see it has different modes we call it. So you can say I want the full page, and it's going to save everything you see. Uh, or I can say I just want a region, and it says drag and release. So I can say oh, I just want this picture actually, um, or I can say I want the article. The article is a cool one to me because what it does is it cleans up the page, it gets rid of ads, it gets rid of the extra stuff. So you can see I just have the critical information I want here, and that's all that will be sent to my OneNote. And from there, all I have to do is pick a place in my OneNote where I want it to go. And so I can actually go to my Contasso, my nonprofit corp uh, notebook here, and I can say I actually want to put it in my fundraising section. And from there, I just hit the clip button, uh, and it will save it off into OneNote, and I don't have to do another thing. Which is really nice because I don't even have to leave my browser. So I can keep researching, keep go moving on, and just know that it's safely, safe and sound in OneNote. So that's uh, the OneNote Clipper. And you can get that for free at OneNote.com slash Clipper. So I also wanted to, to get, I, that gets a little far ahead there. It's a tool that you can install right off the bat. But I am now showing you the OneNote app. And I wanted to show this and first start out with a brief explanation of how it's actually structured. How the actual u user interface and the look and feel of it helps you stay sane in a world with tons of information. So like I said earlier, we are built around a metaphor of a physical notebook. 
Um, the way that works is you'll see this drop down over here on the left. This is your notebooks view. And so what you can do is you can click this, and you're actually seeing right here all the notebooks that I have. These are my personal notebooks, my work notebooks. You can mix both together because uh, you can sign in with multiple accounts in OneNote. You can also keep them separate if you'd like to. I like to have everything available all the time because I think I, I, I work best that way. But in this view, you see all the notebooks that you have. And so for example, your team at work uh, may just create a single notebook for the entire workplace team. And so that's what I did here. That's what this Contasso notebook is. And within this notebook lives my entire world of information for work. Um, and so I've tried to set up some what I call sections. These are the next kind of level of hierarchy in OneNote. And think of sections just if you had a physical notebook sitting on your desk. The sections are like those tabs that we all had in our physical notebooks. It just helps you delineate different pieces of the notebook to help you even organize a bit more. And so what I have here is examples of different sections you could set up. These are completely customizable. I just literally typed these myself and made them. Uh, but I have ones, for example, like meeting notes. I have event planning, fundraising, project metrics, and then a couple uh, projects with some other uh, teams and corporations. So that's sections. These are those tabs at the top. And then the last hierarchy bit is we have is called pages. So within a section, so I'm in the meeting notes section for example, I have pages on the right hand side here. And these pages are simply a single uh, piece of information. So I may have in my meeting notes section as you see here, weekly team syncs. And so every week I can just click the add page button, it creates a blank page, and I can start typing you know, today's date and, and be off my way on my notes. So that is a very high level explanation of, again just to recap, notebooks, sections, and then pages. So that's how OneNote helps you stay organized a bit. So it helps you jump between worlds because I can now jump, oh, I have a weekly brunch group that I always go out with. We put little you know, restaurants to check out. I can jump there, and now I'm in that world. And it helps me organize because I'm not, no longer, you know, for example, if you compare this to email, everything's just flying in all the time. And you either have to you know, kind of manually click and drag things into folders or you have to search for it, and it's all just one inbox. It's a big mess. Uh, OneNote is helping you stay structured a bit. So for meeting Ian, notes, I wanted to yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to clarify because we have folks asking questions on the back end, whether you're in a web app version or an installed instance on your sure. computer, or if you're using Office 365, and if you had to log, be logged into Office 365, um, does it look the same in these different apps, uh, whether you're at OneNote.com or Office 365, or whether you have it installed as part of your Office Suite or as a standalone product? Sure. So I am using OneNote 2016. Um, this is the latest and greatest version. It's in a preview now. Um, to be, uh, it, it changes some things, but there's, there, if you're using 2015, it, it visually will look fairly similar. Um, and that, that version is released now. This is on Windows right now, and I'm running Windows 10. Um, however, we have, uh, like I said earlier, a plat uh, an app on every platform almost. So the look and feel for those, we try to kind of make look and feel um, similar enough that you could use them on different platforms and not be confused. But obviously they'll look and feel a little bit like that platform, right? So if you're using it on your iPhone, it's going to look and feel like an iPhone app. Um, or if you're using it on a Mac, it's going to have a fam more familiar Mac interface. But the general, for example, the heading up here with uh, the ribbon, all those tools will be very similar uh, in similar locations. Um, and then if you're using our web app, uh, that version is accessible in any browser. Um, that one uh, is a, a, a little bit more um, uh, skin, slimmed down in terms of the user interface and features, but it's actually very full featured for a web app these days. Um, and that's good in, in the kind of last resort cases where maybe you're at a machine and there's nothing installed on it. You can just go to oneup.com. Um, if I actually jump to my browser here and show you, uh, if you go to onenote.com, oops, sorry about that. You'll see right up here, um, you, you actually get the ability to sign in. And once you're signed in, you can access your uh, notebooks uh, right through the browser um, and use our web app. So just to clarify, today I am showing you in uh, the Windows client OneNote 2016. And we know most so, of you won't have that yet <laughs> because it's not actually, aside from the, the preview version, it's not publicly uh, available through like our donation program yet, but it will be coming soon. Um, but we, you know, he's showing it on what he has on his machine. It will look similar on a lot of other machines and different versions um, if you're running 2013 Office right now and it's part of your Office 
Pro Suite or Office Standard Suite, um, it does look pretty similar. And that's what we use here at TechSoup is the Office 2013 because we don't have 2016 yet either, or Windows 10 yet. So uh, it's a common scenario, but it does look very similar. And one person just asked if you can show the clip that was just saved, what it actually looks like in your notes uh, before you move on to the next thing. That would be great. Sure. There it is. So one of the things that's really cool about that, when you do the article mode, so you see it saved it in my Contasso notebook under the fundraising section, and then it created a new page for that in there um, with the title of the web page. So it just did that automatically for me. It adds the date that it did it and the time. Um, and then you'll see one of the things <clears throat> that's really cool about it is it inserts that content just as real text. And so for example, then if I want to um, you know, copy and paste it from here into an email, or I want to you know, actually type an edit in here and say this is great, whatever I want to do. It's all um, editable. And then at the bottom of the page, we always give you a link back to where it actually came from. Um, so if you ever want to get back to the original article um, for whatever reason, you can do that as well. So for meeting notes, I know meeting notes is a big scenario um, in almost any industry. We're all taking notes in meetings. Um, and I wanted to quickly show uh, what you can do in the power of OneNote. I think um, there are many ways to take meeting notes. Uh, we all have our own way we like to do it. One of the things that I like to show, and I think it's probably one of the most powerful features of OneNote, is the ability to have Outlook meeting note integration. And so if you happen to be using Outlook for your email, as many folks do, um, what we do in OneNote is you'll notice up here in the ribbon, there's this button that says Meeting Details. And so what I can actually do is click this, and it's going to show a list of all of my uh, meetings for the day. And so I can actually click on a meeting. So I have this team, weekly team sync. And I'm going to create a new page before I do that. So let's say I'm about to go to this meeting. I click a new page. I want to take notes. I click on the, the meeting that I'm about to run into. And what you'll see that it does is it actually adds a bunch of information directly from the Outlook meeting invite. And so for example, it already titled the page with the title of the meeting. It adds a list of all the participants who are in the meeting invite. And then it actually will let me, as I'm in the meeting, click these as checkboxes to say, oh, this person actually was in attendance at the meeting, and these folks were not. And then additionally, it gives a link to the Outlook item. It tells you the location and the date. And then it gives you a section down here to actually start taking notes. So if I'm in the meeting, I can say, you know, like, uh, make decision on big task, um, whatever we want to say. And so that's a very fast and effective way to take great meeting notes. Uh, trust me, I've used this before. You send it out and people think you just look so organized and so on top of things. Uh, and then even better is you can uh, actually email this page. So you can click the button right next to it. Um, I'm uh, going to avoid that because uh, I purposely shut down my email so it wouldn't pop up on this. But what it would do is it would uh, automatically launch Outlook with a new email. It will put all the folks, um, all the meeting notes in there for you. Uh, and then you can easily send that out to whoever you, you want to send it to. Um, so that's a really powerful, easy way to take great meeting notes. Uh, and so many times we have you know, meetings where you're trying to come up with action items or summaries after the meeting. I never do that anymore. I am, by the time I'm walking out of a meeting room, I have already emailed all the folks in the meeting room with the summary and the next steps and the action items, and uh, it just saves a ton of time and hassle. So that's, that's meeting notes. Um, one of the things I also wanted to show was event planning uh, scenarios. So this is something you all might be doing. Let's say you have a gala or something for a fundraising. So I tried to put together uh, maybe what an event planning section could look like. So you can imagine creating that section and then having pages in there around, let's say, the venue or the invitation, the menu, the auction, raffle, music, some tips and tricks on how to do even better uh, galas. And then what you'll see is OneNote has this concept. Uh, this white area you see in here is called our canvas. And you can literally type and write anywhere on this canvas. So it's, it's very different than most Office apps, let's say Excel where you're in a, a structured grid, or um, Word where you're kind of uh, bound by margins. OneNote has an infinite canvas that you can do anything on almost. And what that means is you can type anywhere. So I can click, let's say, over here, and I can type here. I could also type up here, right, and just add something. And you'll see it creates these little boxes of content. And once I've done that, I can move that content anywhere I'd like. And so for example, I have this to-do list here that I created, which just adds some text and content. But I actually use what we call tags, which is another very powerful feature in OneNote that lets you kind of categorize information. 
And so tags, for example, we have a to-do tag. So I could add a new line here and it's going to automatically create a, a new box and I can check these off and interact with them as I want. Um, I can star things, let's say if it's an important thing or if I have a question on this one to get the RSVP date, I can add a question mark. And we have a whole list of these, ideas, passwords, criticals, projects, things, movies to see, you name it. Um, and you can even create your own custom tags. That's a super powerful feature. Um, and so I have an example here of just the canvas and the types of content you can put on it. You see there's lots of uh, images that you can put in. I've just copy and pasted these from the Internet. You could also have used the OneNote Clipper like I showed before and, and selected a region. And then um, also I wanted to show in this example here, this is the invitation page. Uh, I got this design back and, and this is what the designer helped us put together for the invitation. And what I was able to do here is go up to the, the, the ribbon and select our draw tab. OneNote is actually uh, a very sophisticated um, inking tool. And so what you can do here is you can do a ton of different ways to highlight content, to actually annotate and ink. If you have a tablet and a pen, you can and certainly take advantage of that. Um, since I'm on the computer here, I just did it with my mouse, which also works. Um, or if you have a touch screen uh, as well, you can use your finger. But in this instance, I just wanted to call out that we need to change the address. So I just selected the pen here. I circled around it like that. Uh, and then I, I just typed over here. I switched back to the, to the typing mode, and I just typed an updated address. Um, and again, I can move this anywhere I want because OneNote is super flexible with its canvas, uh, and it just lets me put content where I want. I'm not ever fighting with OneNote. That's the one thing I really do like about the product. So that's a good example of inking. Um, we also have highlighting if you want to highlight things to show off. Um, and you can mess around with all that. Um, the other thing I want to show off was uh, the ability to add any type of content into OneNote. And this is a big piece of it. So our canvas lets you actually add not just typed text and images, but you can put documents on there. So um, I had an example uh, that I was going to show you of, if I can do this without messing things up, um, inserting a file attachment. So you can go to the Insert tab and click File Attachment. And I can actually just go to my desktop and select a PDF, for example. And I can get an option here to insert it as a couple different ways. So I can attach the file, or I can do an inserted printout. A printout will actually show the entire document right on the canvas. Uh, sometimes I like to attach a file like this, and then it just puts the PDF right on the page. I can double click and open it at any time I want. And this works with tons of different files. All the Office files, so if you have an Excel file, I had a fundraising um, a project metrics uh, example over here with a team budget. So I put both the attachment of the Excel file and a printout so I can see all of the actual uh, information right on the page. Um, so that's inserting attachments, and that works with lots of different file types. One other thing I wanted to point out is we have our powerful search, which I mentioned before. So that search uh, will let you do a bunch of things and pull up any content you want. So if I wanted to search Gala, you'll see it popped it right up to the top. Here's that page that I just clipped at the beginning of the webinar from the Clipper itself. I click that and it jumps me right to that page. So you notice our search was super fast. It pulled up the exact thing I searched for. Uh, and it, you know, we just added this a few minutes ago and it's already indexed in, in the app and, and findable. Um, there's also some other interesting features. Uh, I, for, because of the way the webinar is set up, I don't want to try it, but I, I will point it out to you. It's called recording. So you can record audio um, or video in your OneNote. And the audio is extremely interesting. So if you record audio, uh, with a microphone, let's say, while you're taking notes in a meeting, OneNote will actually sync up the text that you're writing with the audio that you're taking. So for example, a lot of times we're in a, in a spoken meeting like this and there's a lot being said, and you might want to just take down short notes, not write everything verbatim. So if you write a very cryptic note sometimes, you might look at it two weeks later and say, what the heck was that in reference to? OneNote, if you happen to be recording audio at the same time, will jump the audio to that exact moment you took that cryptic note. So you can hear the context of the conversation that happened while you took that cryptic note. Uh, it's extremely powerful. People use it in lectures and in talking series all the time. It's extremely powerful. Um, so jumping back here to the metrics, or sorry, to the event planning, uh, you can see here I, I put a printout of a menu. Um, and then I even uh, clipped a, a tips and tricks article that I saw from the New York Times on how to do a better gala here. It puts the article uh, at the bottom there so I can get back to it. Um, and so that's, that's uh, some of the other features that we have. Um, I also wanted to show we have review section. This is an important feature. Sometimes people like to be able to translate things. So we have a translate feature 
Um, so you can actually do all your spell checks, uh, read thesauruses, translation. But one thing that's interesting is password protection. So you can password protect a section. So let's say you have some kind of private information in a team notebook. Maybe it's just for manager situation or it's sensitive information of some sort. You can actually password protect that. Um, and so only the folks that you give the password to will be able to access it. And uh, I know I only have a couple more minutes here, so I wanted to be able to show you um, uh, some of the ways that you can actually collaborate and share uh, information out. So once you've set up a notebook like this, you can actually just click on the file section up here. And what this does is it sends you into a familiar backstage, as we call it, which all the Office apps have. And if you click Share, uh, you will actually be taken to a bunch of different options to share your notebook with uh, your coworkers, or your colleagues, or your friends or family. And so right now it's telling me which notebook that is about to be shared. Uh, it's showing the location of that. So in this instance I've saved it to my personal OneDrive, but you may use Office 365 and have a, a team OneDrive. Um, with sharing with people, you can literally just type the email addresses of all those folks. Um, you can set the permissions. So you can say, I want these people to be able to edit or just view the notebook so they can't actually change any of the content. You can obviously include a little note with that. Um, and then hit Share, and it will actually send an email to all the folks that you put up there and give them a link uh, to do that. If you want to create a more uh, shareable notebook, you're not exactly sure who needs access, for example, you can click this. Uh, it will give you either a view or create link. And you could just, for example, put that on a wiki page of some sort or an uh, email you know, if you're not exactly sure all the folks that need it. Um, and so that's uh, ways that you can share your notebook uh, in OneNote. And back here, uh, just to wrap up, I think uh, I'm almost out of time, you can do all sorts of other things like create a new notebook, for example, open existing notebooks, uh, print your notebooks, um, export them. So we export things uh, as you can export just a page, a section, or a notebook. So you don't have to feel bound by sharing everything all the time. Uh, and then you can also um, do your account options back here, uh, which are very similar to all the Office apps. Um, so nothing really uh, interesting or special there for OneNote. So I want to hand it back over because I think I'm uh, just about out of time. Uh, but hopefully this gave you a good introduction to OneNote. There's a lot to it, and that's almost by design. You know, note taking is a very open space. You can do lots of different types of notes, lots of different activities. But OneNote really does a lot of things well uh, for a lot of different people. So I really encourage you to give it a try. Um, I think uh, Becky will mention all the different ways you can go get it. Um, but just to recap, there's OneNote.com. Uh, there's the um, wonder.com slash apps if you want to try out the things for other um, platforms. Uh, and I'll, with that, I'll hand it back over. Thank you so much for that, Ian. I know that was a whirlwind, so don't worry folks. You're getting the video of this as well later, and you'll be able to review any parts that went too quickly and watch it over again for any pieces you want more details on. Uh, before we get into Q&A, which we'll start in just a moment, I wanted to go ahead and mention the different ways you can access OneNote if you don't have it already. Uh, you may have it already as part of an installed Office Suite if you're running uh, Office Standard or Professional Plus that you may have received through TechSoup. If you don't have it, and you'd like that, uh, we have the 2013 version available, and 2016 version is coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. And the donated licenses of installed Office software uh, come with Software Assurance, which allows you to upgrade for no additional cost within two years of receiving that donation. So this, these links are active in the PowerPoint deck, even though you can't click on them on screen right now. So if you're looking for Office licenses for the installed application, you can get those here. Um, you can also get OneNote as a standalone product. Maybe you have a different version of Office Suite on your desktop and it didn't come with OneNote and you'd like to just try it out um, as an installed item. You can do that with a $6 admin fee through Microsoft's donation program with us. It also comes with Software Assurance that allows you to upgrade uh, that product within two years of receiving that donation. If you are interested in Office 365 as a donation, you can get that, and it includes OneNote as well. And then as Ian mentioned, you can get the free version through OneNote.com. So a variety of ways to access OneNote. Um, if you're not sure and you don't have it already installed and you want to try it out, go forth and do that at OneNote.com. Uh, that may be the easiest way for you to just try it out, play around with it, see how it works for you. Lots of different ways to get it. And we want to make it available to you because we see that it is a powerful tool that you can do a lot with. 
and can help your organization keep notes from being piled up on your desk on Post-its and help you share and collaborate and brainstorm and collect all of that in an organized way. We use it here at TechSoup an awful lot, and it's a great tool that I think is frequently overlooked because people just don't realize what it can do. So there is some uh, additional resources. Again, these will be clickable in the PowerPoint that you get if you received it via email in that last reminder email an hour before we started it. Uh, these resources are clickable there, and you'll get them also. We included an article about Windows 10 since we know that is uh, available now and coming through the Volume Licensing Service Center uh, this weekend. So we're excited to have that available. So if you want to be using it with Windows 10 like Ian was today, we included that article as well. Um, so on to Q&A. We've got a lot of questions in the queue, and we've been working our way through them for a while. Ian, can you tell us a little bit about when you, uh, you had to log in to sync things up. If, for example, you're running uh, OneNote on your desktop as part of an installed Office Suite, and you want to share and collaborate that uh, with, your co with your colleagues and coworkers, or maybe even outside of your organization, do you have to have an Exchange server running to do that? Are you able to do that through having an account with the uh, app version? Or if you want to sync it with your cell phone or your tablet? You mentioned that it's, it can collabor collaborate across all of these platforms, and people are just curious how it works. Like, does it work with Blackberries? Does it work with Androids? Um, a lot of yeah. different questions coming in about the different platforms and how to sync them. Yeah. I, I appreciate the folks asking because I, I actually am just thinking about the fact that I kind of skimmed over a very critical component of OneNote, which is the syncy. It goes, the information goes on all your devices. So um, the easy way to explain this is OneNote, you noticed, uh, is different than all the other Office apps in that it doesn't have a Save button. There's never a save that you need to do. Um, and so we save all the time in the background, and we sync that data that we're saving to anywhere you have OneNote installed. Um, and so you can install OneNote on any of your platforms, obviously, and you just log in with the same account. So for personal use, you would log in with your Microsoft account. If you're using it through Office 365 or your organization, um, like for example, an on-premises deployment, you're going to log in with your organization account information there. Um, however, uh, the other piece of that is we do have to save our data somewhere. Um, and what we typically do is we try to abstract that away from the end user so you don't have to worry about it. But you do need to pick a location for your notebook to save. Um, so for example, in my instance, I saved this notebook to my personal OneDrive. Um, you can also save it to your Works uh, OneDrive account. But we're OneDrive back. So the, the data is going to OneDrive. Um, if you're not saving it to OneDrive, either through Office 365 or your personal one, then you're saving it to a local machine, uh, for example, or a SharePoint server. Um, and if you're saving it to your local machine, obviously it's not going to sync to all your other devices. Um, so a huge benefit of OneNote is the fact that it, the data just goes to all your devices all the time. So I can take a note on my work machine, go out the door, and it's on my phone before I even open the app. Um, and so you need to make sure that you're, you're saving to a place uh, that can do that for you. So we really hope we, – we try to tell people you're not going to get a lot of the benefits of OneNote if you're saving you know, locally. Um, so you really want to save primarily to OneDrive uh, if you can. Great. And somebody asked also if you can share from SharePoint. So if you have you know, a SharePoint site that you're using yeah. to save your files, does it work the same yeah. way? Instead of using OneDrive, you'd use SharePoint? Correct. So you would just change the location. When I was in the backstage area before showing that, you would just uh, change your location to a SharePoint uh, location um, and be off and running there. Um, I will say uh, in, we are building lots of features though that take advantage of some of the things that OneDrive lets us do. Um, so if, you, if your organization hasn't checked out uh, using OneDrive um, through 365, for example, uh, which I saw somebody in the chat asking what's OneDrive. OneDrive is just Microsoft storage platform. Um, and so uh, I would encourage you to check that out if you haven't because there's some stuff that we just can't do with SharePoint that we can do with OneDrive. So if you happen to be on OneDrive, you're just going to get even more capabilities and features uh, from OneNote. Great. We had some folks asking about security. So if they're sharing um, and they you know, want to have that collaboration and they're sharing to OneNote or SharePoint or they're using OneNote.com and their stuff is being stored out there in the ethos. Um, how secure is that? Is there 
you know, does this meet like HIPAA compliance and, and things like that that organizations may be beholden to uh, following when it comes to security? Sure. So the short answer here, um, and this is something that you know, can get very complicated and there's a lot to it depending on your specific situation and scenario. The short answer is um, OneNote offers the password protection uh, based on a section that I showed earlier. Um, and we do encrypt that, that password. So for example, if you lose it, we can't even recover it. We don't even have access to it. Um, that's, that's the level that OneNote gives you. Uh, any other security measures are going to roll up to the same things that the rest of your Office apps are going to provide you. Um, and that typically from like a HIPAA compliance and that sort of area, um, that's going to be covered a lot through our Office 365 offerings. Um, and so I, I'm not the most well versed on, on all this stuff, so I don't want to speak to anything incorrectly, but I do know that if you go um, look into, like just do a quick search for Office 365 and security, they, they have a ton of great information for you on that. Um, and OneNote just rolls up uh, to those standards. So we don't do anything different. We're not any lower, but we're not any more unique other than that password protection. Great. And we know that password protection is only as strong as your password, so that's more of a human behavior uh, topic that you want to make sure that anybody who's using it, who's using your network, that they're setting secure passwords. And that's something – there's a lot of resources out there including on TechSoup's site. We've done lots of webinars on how to create secure passwords. So uh, definitely try and make sure that people are using and not sharing passwords, that they are setting up their own accounts and keeping those things secure so that you don't lose any of your important data. Um, so we have a bunch of people who are interested in using OneNote for project management and asking if you had any tips around if you are using it to you know, plan that annual fundraising gala that you had as an example, and, and you've got a, a notebook that's got a sheet on here's the draft of the invitation, and here are some to-dos that we might have, and here's a list of supplies we need to purchase. And you know, do you have any advice on how uh, folks can use it? I mean it's not in itself a, a project management tool where it sends alerts and texts and reminders to people to do things with deadlines and bright red. Um, but do you have any tips on how people can use it uh, for project management or when they're collecting things for say an annual event or notes on how to set up their board meeting and divvying out to-dos? Yeah, I think you, you, you uh, remind me of a really good analogy I like to explain to folks that if you try to place OneNote in the ecosystem of Office apps and you say, well, when should I use it? That's always the struggle. It's like, when should I use this rather than Word or rather than Excel or PowerPoint or whatever? What I like to tell folks is that OneNote is, if you were to draw a timeline, um, and on the left-hand side of the timeline was the very early stages of your project, OneNote fits perfectly right there. And the reason for that is it's so great for collaboration and brainstorming um, because of that freeform canvas letting you write anywhere, clip things from the Internet as you're researching, uh, put content anywhere you want and get others' feedback on it. You want to do that at the early stages. And then as you formalize things as the project gets um, you know, further down the line, you know, like you said, we're not trying to be a project management software. We have project management software at Microsoft that you can use. Um, and if you want to get into alerting and, and that sort of thing, we recommend you, you check out some of those. But I would say that OneNote is great at that early stage. Um, it's when you really want to get the brainstorming going, um, get the free-flowing things. One thing that just reminded me is if you are doing brainstorming or mind mapping or any of that sort of thing, there is a great app that we have called Office Lens. And it's, it's on multiple platforms now. Um, it's an app for your phone. And what it does is you can take pictures of images, uh, so whiteboards or documents, and it will clean up the images, it will de-skew whiteboards, uh, crop them for you, and put all that content into OneNote. And then one feature that I didn't get to show off, which is extremely powerful in OneNote, is what we call Optical Character Recognition, or OCR. What that does is it basically takes text out of pictures and lets you click in our search box. And let's say I took a picture of a menu that I was walking by on the street um, at a restaurant I wanted to go to. I can just search for a word that was in that picture, and it will actually pop that up in the search, even though it's not actually you know, typed out text. It's just in the image. Um, so that's a, that's, a, that's a really powerful feature. Uh, but the reason I bring it up for the brainstorming is a lot of people do kind of sticky note brainstorming. And so you could do that, have your team post them up on a whiteboard, for example, take it, snap a picture of the whiteboard at the end of the meeting, and now all those sticky notes are, are searchable and, and uh, organized in your uh, OneNote. Terrific. And I think that's a really helpful way to think about it. Um, we also have some questions about um, 
you know, the differences between the app version and the installed desktop version, and also if there are big differences between, you know, is there a Mac version? Because it's not included in the Mac Office suite that we currently uh, have available through TechSoup's donation program with Microsoft. So is there a, a Mac version specifically as well? Yes, so we, that was the uh, latest platform that we released on, I want to say it was about a year and a half ago or maybe two years now. Um, so we do have a full featured Mac app of OneNote. Uh, you can just go in the Mac App Store and download that. Um, I think if you go, yeah, I know if you go to OneNote.com, uh, there will be a link uh, to the Mac uh, version as well. Um, and that version, uh, of course, it's the, the newest one. So um, as far as feature set goes, it may not have every single feature that the, the Windows versions have, for example, on the desktop. But we have a, a team of engineers that are working super hard on it. Uh, and we're releasing updates uh, all the time, quite frankly. Um, and so it's, it's getting there. Uh, and it's, it's a great app. I mean, it's, it's been, um, I believe it was even featured by Apple as one of their best of apps. Uh, if you go in the App Store on, on the Mac, you'll see it has super high ratings. Uh, people really like it. Terrific. We um, also had a couple of questions, and I know we're almost at time. Uh, just asking what the name of the app was that you mentioned that can take pics of whiteboards. A few people yeah, asked, what was that called again? It's, it's called Office Lens, um, L-E-N-S, Office Lens. Uh, and that is on multiple platforms. I know, um, at, I know it's on iOS because I use it myself. Um, and I know it's on Windows Phone and I believe even Android now. Um, but Office Lens, it's, it's extremely cool. Great. And we are almost at time, so we would love it if you would share with us, our audience, one thing you learned today that you're going to go ahead and try out, whether it's maybe opening up OneNote for the first time and trying to take your meeting notes there, or whether it's uh, getting an online account with it so you can share and collaborate, or saving to a OneDrive, or connecting to your SharePoint, or trying out some of the apps on uh, your different mobile devices and seeing how they sync up. Also, we'd love it if you would share any of this content that you think might be useful to your colleagues, friends, coworkers, so that they can learn a little bit more about what this tool can offer to them. And we know we covered a lot in a short amount of time. And we will include resources and links to where you can learn more, including you know, watching some live tutorials of different ways that people use it. We'll include some of that in that follow-up email. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you Ian for taking the time to share with us a, a little glimpse into what the power of OneNote can do for nonprofits and libraries and how you can share, collaborate, brainstorm, and also just use it as your note-taking spot. So it's a great tool, and we really enjoy using it here at TechSoup. I'd also like to invite you to some upcoming webinars and events. We had today's on OneNote. Uh, next week we'll have a webinar on accomplishing more with social media. And then we'll be talking to libraries, particularly small libraries, on technology planning and how to plan out your tech plan for the year or years ahead so that you can keep your technology up to date for your patrons. Hopefully we'll have some more in there in August to share with you. You can learn more about those. Uh, this link again is not clickable right now, but you can see both the webinar archives and our upcoming webinars on our events and webinars page at TechSoup.org. You can join us at TechSoup Global, TechSoup.org, on our Facebook, and on our Twitter. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ian. We really appreciate having you join us and sharing a glimpse into this product. Thanks to Rosette and Allie on the back end for helping answer questions. We know we didn't get to all of them, but we did our best to try and answer as many as we can. And we would invite you again to join us and ask more questions about OneNote. Here's this little bit.ly link down here. It's the quickest way to get to our forums if you want to post additional questions there. We can do our best to answer those within the next day or two. Thank you everyone. And lastly, thank you to ReadyTalk who sponsors our webinars by providing the use of this platform so we can present these webinars on a weekly basis. Before you leave us today, go ahead and complete that post-event survey to let us know how we can continue to improve our webinar program. We really do appreciate your feedback and we read it all and we try to incorporate it. So thanks everyone. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.